The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'll tell you a story, Rabbi, Rabbi Ronnie Greenwald. His neshama should have an aliyah from this story. Just to give you an explanation, you probably didn't know him. He was the most amazing girl rabbi. He, had, he, he, he ran um, Camp Sternberg. He had a, a, a school in Muncie. He was the most amazing man altogether. Crazy, if you look into his story, I think they're about to come out with a book. Rabbi Ronnie Greenwald was amazing. He was in my high school in BCA. He was the dean. He was the top. I went to him when I had situations that I needed help in. So he told me this story. So he always saw, he didn't see, he didn't see you, he saw your children and grandchildren. He didn't see the person. He saw their future. True story. This girl gets kicked out of a Beis Yaakov with a boy, something happened, whatever. And Beis Yaakov was like, out, we can't. She's a machti, she's got other girls into trouble. We can't, we have such a girl in our school, it's going to ruin the whole school. And they went to uh, the rabbi of the school, the rabbi who, whatever, and the rabbi said, she has to go. She has to go. And everybody tried to get her to stay. So they called the board of directors, the guys with the money, you know, the powerful guys in the school who support the school. You got to do us a favor. You got to keep the. They tried. Rebbezin said no. They had rabbis in the town call. Rebbezin said no. They had a gadol. They had a gadol hadar call. Rebbezin said no. No, it's my school. I'm not. This is not happening. Okay, done. What are you going to do? The parents went to Rabbi Greenwald and said, Ronnie, you're our last stop. Could you talk to the Rebbe? We went to this rabbi, that rabbi, money, this, that, the board, that. She's not listening to nobody. He said, what, what makes you think you can listen to me? Listen, you're Rabbi Greenwald, maybe, I don't know, try. Okay. He never said no to anyone. He would always help a kid, no matter what. He told me the story. He calls up the Rebbe. She picks up the phone. And before he can say one word, she says, if you're calling about so-and-so... Don't waste your time. I'm not taking her back. He didn't even say what he wanted. He said, no, no, that's not, I didn't call you about her. She said, okay, then we can talk. He said, I, I don't want to talk over the phone. I want to come to, I want to come talk to you. Okay, no problem. He comes to the office and he sits down. She says, okay, Rabbi, everyone loved him. Okay, how can I help you? What can I do for you? I want to ask you a question out of the box. Would you ever, like if a Bobby walked in, let's say, with her granddaughter or whatever, is there anything she could do that you would throw her out of your school? She would, he would throw a Bobby out of school? Like, what, what are you talking about? Chas Shama would never throw a Bobby out of school. He looks and he goes, really? A Bobby, a Babuchka, not a Chas Shama. You did! He goes, what? She goes, what? He goes, did you throw, I'll give her name, Miriam. Did you throw Miriam out of school? She said, you promised you wouldn't say Miriam. You, you promised you wouldn't talk about her. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about one day she, Miriam, is going to be a Bobby. So right now what she is, I'm not talking about her. I am talking about in 40 years from now. What kind of Bobby is she going to be if you throw out of school and she ends up on the street? She's not going to be a Bobby of a from family. You threw out a mommy, a Bobby, and an out of Bobby. Whew. I'm not talking about her. I'm not talking about Miriam. Miriam you can throw out. But you can't throw out Baba Miriam. It's a true story. And this woman just sat there in shock. Okay, we have to think it over. And she, she didn't throw it. So everybody in this room, you're not a girl. You're not a seminary girl. You're a grandmother. You're a mother. You have your potential. On Tu it's a dead tree. But you're eating the fruit of the dead tree last year. 
That should be the biggest chizik for you when you sit tonight and you eat your fruit and you make a bracha. Shechiyanu v'kimanu v'giyanu v'zman hazeh. Hashem, you gave me life to realize at this moment that it's potential that counts. I might look dead, Hashem. I might be in trouble. I might not be keeping all your mitzvahs. But look what happens from a dead tree, from a dead girl who's, who's broken inside. But look what happens the next year. There's a fruit. That was his godless. That was the rabbi's godless. But you have to look in the mirror and make the same cheshben as he did. What am I doing? Yeah, for me, who cares? I'm looking at movies and all this other stuff. But it's not you. You're a mama, you're a grandmother. What are you doing? What are you setting yourself up for? Judaism is potential. That's what Yiddishkeit is.